Hi, so glad to have you here with me today. The topic is angelic resonance healing, and I'll explain what that is to you very shortly. First, a hello to my listeners in Sydney, Nova Scotia. I love knowing that you're here with me. Thank you for supporting the show. It's so, so much, so much gratitude I have for you for doing that. Thank you. Um, I want to talk to you about this. This first, I have to explain, this is a system of healing that was given to me by my angels. Uh, and this was because I started my career in, in spirituality Yes, I was doing intuitive readings, but I was also primarily doing healing. And I did um, medical Qigong energy healing, which is a form of hands-on energy healing. And I did that for a long time and I absolutely loved it. Uh, some profound experiences. And when my back wouldn't let me do that anymore, because you have to hold these crazy twister positions for long periods of time. I was quite depressed about it because I missed healing people. I I really wanted to be able to do that again. And I just, I couldn't. And it wasn't very long after that, that my angels woke me up and told me I'm going to do angelic resonance healing. And I didn't know what it was either. So don't feel bad. So what it is, is I, if a client comes to see me in person, I have five crystals that are closely associated with angels that my angels told me to use with this type of session. I have them hold them up against their heart like this. If I'm doing it virtually, I hold them against my heart chakra and focus in on the client. So I want to talk a little bit about these stones. There's certainly other stones that are connected with angels. These are not the only ones. These are just specifically ones that my team of angels told me to obtain and to use. So the first one is selenite. It's a pretty common crystal. You've seen this one. It's a, yeah, I'm going to turn it this way too, so you can see that it has a squarish shape to it. And then it's got these striations through it. It's very powerful. So that's one I use. The other one is blue celestite. And it is this stone right here. So it's not clear, but it's a pale blue color. Uh, the other one, another one is Iolite. And mine happens to be in the shape of an angel. A client gave this to me as a gift. And it happened to be one of the stones that my angels had told me to get. It was the last one I needed. The client gave it to me and I looked it up. I'm like, oh my goodness, it is Iolite. So it's green. And it has different shades and it's got kind of a marbling look through it like marble does. Iolite. This is a Herkimer diamond. I started off with a teeny tiny one. This is the first one I got. These are expensive and I got this tiny little Herkimer diamond. This is a larger Herkimer I finally got my hands on. And it's truncated, meaning pointed at both ends. So this is a very powerful stone to use with angelic work. All of these stones are also useful for other purposes. You don't have to use them with angels or with healing. And then this one, my good friend Janet gave to me, which is angelite. And I love that it's in a heart shape. Uh, it's It means a lot to me because she gave it to me, but I, I just love the feel of it. So it's a, it's a blue, almost lavender color, and it does have some variation in it. It's hard to see on camera, but... There's some like lighter little tiny veins and almost like a crystal look inside. It's a lovely stone. So I will take these five and what I do again, if, if somebody's coming to see me in session, I hold them like that up against my heart chakra. There went one of the stones, poor thing. And I'm focusing in on the client. So the first thing I do is I ask them, what is the three issues that you want to work on today. And the angels had said this works for physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual issues. So they tell me what those three issues are. And then one by one, I tune into each of those issues. And what I'm doing is just opening myself up. I've already done all the angelic protection like I do before every angelic type of service to make sure creating sacred space that it's only there are angels coming in and my angels helping me with this. And then let's say that the first one is that they have headaches. 
And so I'm going to be focusing on that and just going into pure receiving mode where I am just receiving visions and I'm hearing things, I'm seeing colors, uh, I will feel things in my body associated with that. I, it's not necessarily all of that going to happen, but I'm just receptive to whatever comes through about that issue. Let's, we're saying this one, just for sake of an example, is headaches. And at the beginning, when I start working on an issue, especially a physical issue, I'll usually see a color like red. And red for me with my healing is signaling dis-ease in the body in a specific place. And as I'm doing my healing, I'm really also paying attention to see if other colors come up. Sometime during it, I'll usually see the colors of my angels coming in and I'll see white, which is always angelic light. And then at the end, what I'm looking for after I've received everything else and and I'm just talking and they're recording because I can't write as I'm doing all of this and holding crystals. And I will eventually see green. And that's what I'm looking for. When I see green, then I know that the angels have done their work and that issue is healed. So how are they doing it? When I call in angels, I feel their frequency and everything has a frequency. The earth itself has a frequency. Plants, animals, humans, we all have a frequency. And so what I'm doing is calling in a lot of angelic protection. I'm calling in archangels. I'm calling in circles of angels. I am just filling this room up with as much angelic energy as possible. And there's a resonance within that. So for the client who is either here in person or experiencing this virtually, they become encompassed in this frequency, very high frequency of angels, the angels heard what we're talking about. So the angels hear the client saying, I want to work. I have headaches. I have anxiety and I feel lost spiritually. That could be their, for example, three issues they might come to me and want work with. The angels hear that. Their, their team of angels hear that. They're joining my team of angels. They're joining archangels in sending frequency and healing to that person, to that specific issue they're having. So what I feel when the angels are doing that is I start feeling a vibration moving through my body. And I normally get chills, really hard chills. Um, if it's archangels, it's even more intense. But the frequency becomes higher and I can feel that like a buzz around me and the frequency gets higher and higher, uh, more intense as that healing goes on for each issue until it's almost like when I see that green, the angels kind of step back and it's a mutual, not only am I seeing the green, but I'm feeling the angels like take a step back and they feel like that issue is done and they're waiting. Okay, what's the next thing we're going to work on? What do you want to be next? Then we focus on that. What clients have reported feeling in their body during this is sometimes very similar to what I'm feeling. They'll usually, I'll tell them when I feel the angels coming in, because if they're feeling something, I want them to know why, so they can start associating that sensation with the feeling of archangels coming in or their team of angels coming in or angels starting the frequency healing. And usually they'll feel some sensation. So let's go back to the headache example. So they might feel right there in their head, wherever they tend to have the headaches, they'll feel the vibration in that area. They might feel very slight light pressure. Uh, sometimes it's almost like a touch and sometimes it's like a slight pressure from within. Um, but they'll feel that frequency and they'll feel the energy of the angels around them. And it's very uplifting. Just that's very calming, very healing in itself. Um, sometimes they'll see the same colors that I do. Um, if somebody is a healer, I'm a natural healer. I just, I was born with the ability to heal. Many people are, they tend to see the colors too. And that's, it sort of goes hand in hand with healing techniques is seeing the colors um, to the point where 
even if I'm not doing healing, um, something I always tell my reflexologist, I see her every other week. And every time I see her, I have my eyes because I have a little eye patch, you know, a little eye mask over my eyes. And I will see all kinds of colors that I don't see anywhere else, like lime green angels coming in and lime green mixed with white that I just don't normally see. And it's something to do with the work she's doing. And I always tell her about that. So if you see colors, uh, particularly when you're having any kind of body work or doing any kind of healing and you're seeing colors, that's what that's about. Uh, sometimes we have gifts, we have abilities we don't even realize is a gift or is an ability till somebody points that out. Uh, and especially if you were born with it, then you just think that's just the way it is. Everybody has that. No, they don't. They don't. You know, that's something, you know, um, plenty of other people have, but not everybody. So I like this technique because there's a lot of people who don't want to be touched. And I respect that, you know, um, people wouldn't come to me for medical Qigong energy healing and not want to be touched because it says right there in the description, it's hands on. But this is something you don't have to come to the Sedona area to see me. You can just have this done from anywhere in the world. Uh, I like to be able to see you just because it's the next thing, best thing to a session to an in-person session, but I just enjoy meeting people and that feels more like we're meeting, but I don't have to. You can be on the phone. We could even do this via email, I've done it plenty of times. And it doesn't really matter, you know, it's still, you still receive the healing. So something else the angels had me do was, um, I'm gonna grab these cards real quick. I've used these cards for a long time. My, one of my mentors, turned me on to these and they're just my favorites and they're called angels of Atlantis. They're Oracle cards. They just have the name of an archangel and a word at the bottom. I like them to not have a lot of words. No words at all would be fine. I don't want things to influence what I'm picking up intuitively. And so what I do with this, the angel said, pull a card. So I started saying, okay, after we know the, the three, if the three things they want worked on and I've done the healing on it. They, I pull a card and the intention is this card is going to kind of wrap up and integrate the three issues you asked me to work on today. And in this case, it's Archangel Raziel intuition. Um, I don't often get a hit off a card. I'm not, I don't do card readings. I just use these to help me get get information to help me tune into a person or separate energy from one person or situation to another. Um, I thought it was interesting when the angel said, pull a card for people. Sure. So I want to talk a little bit about what happens after this session. Um, 30 minutes is enough for most people, but there are quite a bit of people who like to do an hour of this. That's fine. And if, if we get through the three issues and you have more issues, I do more issues until we're out of time. It's not just the healing in the session that goes on. It's very interesting. I did not expect this as many things the angels have guided me to do. It's been as much a surprise to me as it is to my clients. My angels don't always tell me, hey, by the way, when you do angelic resonance healing, it's going to continue for weeks after their session. Now, I just find out later. So the clients would tell me, I felt like I still kept getting better. I felt like I had improvement with those three areas for weeks, sometimes more than a month after that session, like they could still feel the higher frequency within their body, that resonance, which is all the angelic energy working within them. Somehow it like continues working on them. And so I say, this is not me doing healing. This is angels doing the healing. And they use me as like a vessel for the, for the communication and to hold the crystals and send all that energy to the particular part of the client that they need the healing on. But I found it very interesting that they were continuing to receive benefits on afterwards. Do I do repeat sessions with this? Sometimes people do need it. Um, the other type of healing I do is thought field therapy, which is what came before EFT is TFT. I just learned it 
almost 30 years ago, I've been doing this very heavily since then for myself and clients. Um, so I'm familiar with how the effects of a healing can be outside of the bounds of the session, but this seems even more so than normally, than it normally would be for, for like thought filled therapy. Um, and I like people to know that because there are many things that angels can do to heal us. And I've certainly experienced this with myself where angels healed some, a couple of things within me that I was told the only way to fix it is surgery. And I didn't have the surgery and yet it's gone. And the doctors did another cat scan. They're like, Oh, there's nothing there now that's impossible. And yet it happened. However, there's plenty of things that the angels have been very clear about that they cannot, for the sake of your body, your best and highest good, they can't completely heal it in session. It would be too much. It would wipe you out too much, too much of a detox, take too much energy from you, be too much of a shock to your system. They've talked about all those things. And so they can only heal you to the level that your body is able to handle at that time or your mind or your spirit, whatever it may be. And I believe that that is why they make it so that the healing continues for quite a long period after the session. And I now tell people just expect that it'll get better and better over the weeks to come. I can never tell somebody like, how long is the healing going to last? I don't know. It's different for different people based on what you need and what you can handle how much you're open to, uh, believe it or not, sometimes things don't get healed because a person doesn't want it to heal. There's something about it that they're getting some perceived benefit. And so they're not ready to let it go. And the angels know that when you're ready to let it go, then they can heal it. Uh, they'll do the best they can up into the level that you'll let them now understand that those kind of blockages are subconscious very few people know that they are blocking healing of something within themselves. And so that's something that has to be dealt with gently and carefully over a period of time. And I love that it's a, it's the healing that keeps on healing. And in a lot of ways, it's sort of a res restoration, a restoration of the body, of the mind, of the spirit, um, if you wonder like what would be some spiritual issues, people might say, sometimes people feel like they're stalled on their spiritual path or they feel like they've lost their connection to their angels or to God. Uh, sometimes they feel like they're a bad person. They've come to this feeling like they're bad. And so they're, they kind of um, stymie their own spiritual growth. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that happen. Um, I see a lot of people who've been through trauma, they have PTSD, and many times when someone's been through a long period of extended abuse, uh, they will lose faith in God in a higher power. They'd feel like, you know, if there's a God, this wouldn't have happened to me. I'm a good person. There couldn't be a God. That kind of thing uh, is a typical spiritual issue that somebody might come to me asking for help with, which I'm happy to do, because that's a, a terrible place to be where you feel like you're just lot, you're out there on your own in the universe and there is no higher power, there's no angels. Um, that That is not a natural state of being in the eyes of, of our higher power of God and certainly not of our angels. And so they are very eager to have an opportunity to come in and mend these things, whatever they may be, by no means is this type of healing limited to the examples that I gave you today. Those are just some examples so you would understand. Um, there are certain limitations to this, I feel. Uh, I do believe there's types of healing that can be some pretty miraculous healing, physical healing. I see this as being more like a realignment, a restoration. And it's just very interesting. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what this was when they first were talking to me about it. And I kind of bugged them. I'm like, what do I call this? You know, what, what should I call this? And 
I tried coming up with names. And then finally, in a dream one night, my master guide angel came to me and it's like angelic resonance healing. <laughs> and I woke up and I wrote it in my journal and so that I'd remember it because I'm like, even in the middle of the night, I'm thinking, oh yeah, of course, that's perfect. Of course, the angels would know what to name it. I couldn't find anything else that was really like this specifically. There's many different types of healing out there, but um, since this came straight from my angels, and I like to share this kind of story with you because it's very likely that your angels are giving you ideas. If you're a healer, they might give you an idea of how to make a type of healing you studied your own, how to make some changes that work better for you. I always tell people with healing, like you learn to do it. And then over time, you make it your own because you're you're an individual and how what works for you doesn't necessarily work for me and so on and so on. So there's nothing wrong with making some slight changes to make it work better for you and with the way that you receive information or the way that you're doing your healing. It doesn't have to be uh, angelic resonance healing for your angels to be giving you inspiration of things to try, a type of healing you're supposed to learn to add to your already, the toolbox of healing you already know. Um, I'm going to talked for a moment about my friend, Terri Ann, who I swear that woman knows 40 different kinds of healing. She is just got this huge toolbox of healing techniques. And I really respect that. And she's always looking for more and her angels have brought her healing system. So I know I'm not the only one whose angels come and tell them things to do. You know, they told me to change careers from mental health to doing spiritual work full-time. They told me to write a book. I, and they told me to host a show. They told me to create certain kinds of sessions. I mean, so much of what I do in my business came from my angels. I was just telling somebody yesterday at a, an event, I hadn't seen these people for a long time, but I did not see myself doing spiritual work. I actually tried to avoid doing spiritual work. But when the time comes that you're meant to do your work, your angels will let you know. And the same is true for adding a, a healing technique or learning a healing technique or changing your healing technique. When the time comes, you'll know. You'll be given that information very clearly. They may say it. They might show you. They might give it to you in a dream when your subconscious is in operation. It's You're more receptive to it. There's a lot of different ways you can receive this. And my advice is don't fight it. Change is the one constant. It's happening to us all the time, all around the world. Sometimes it's subtle and sometimes it's big and shocking. But when your angels are prompting you to do something different, go with it. It's okay. It's only going to make things better with what you're doing. It's only going to make your gifts stronger or more helpful. You're only going to help more people. Nothing bad ever happened because a person followed the guidance of their angelic team. So I just wanted to share this with you. I realized I had never really talked about the angelic resonance healing. Um, I hope that's of interest to you. And I hope that some of you, I would imagine so that you're like, oh my gosh, that's how I got my healing technique. Let me know. I won't be surprised. I'll just be really happy that you're hearing your angels so clearly as well and that they're guiding you so strongly on your own journey. Uh, I want you to tune in next week. I have a very special guest. It's a longtime friend, Kamisha Gorley, and she is an empath, and she's going to be talking about her journey. Uh, it is a powerful, inspiring story. You don't want to miss it. So that's next Sunday on the show. And in the meantime, may your angels surround you May your angels protect you every moment, every day of your life. I'll see you next week.